candy. Is there a ton of inventory on the market? It's the lowest we've seen in a very, very long time, Mary. So it might be the perfect time to sell. You got to tune in to this episode and check it out. Hello. Welcome to the housing market update here in Southwest Florida. I'm Mary Bartis, my trusted friend. Randy Williams, TBF Mortgage. And we're going to get right into it, Randy, because, you know, one of the things that we're seeing and hearing right now, in times of uncertainty, people follow the certain. And we are seeing a lot of those things. So let's take jump into what Consumer Price Survey on Home Prices is all about. As you saw towards the end of 2022, consumers felt prices were going to go down, 37% of them to be exact, in the next 12-month period. And that's hard because who wants to buy a house? When you think that you bought it here and it's going to go there, one. And two, they're starting to think over what happened in 2008 through 12. The prices were all over the place and they lost money. What is that? Almost 40% of people felt that the prices were going to go down. And I was hearing that a lot actually earlier in the winter. Because why, Randy? They, fortune, here's a crazy thing. 20% price decline. Seven models are leaning towards a crash. The sky is falling, Chicken Little came out and screamed at the top of his lungs. But what happened, Randy? Yeah, I mean, honestly, one in four Americans still believe prices will depreciate. And it's an, it's insane that the people believe all of these things, yet the facts and the information that we have show the exact opposite. Exactly. And and if you look at it, though, it is declining because from January or December, uh, 37% of them now is down through June, which are the most recent data of 26%. But that is one in four. You know, but facts will shatter fear, Randy. And, you know, people would panic. And that's what people were thinking. The analysts were thinking they were going to panic and put their homes on the market because that's what happened in 2008. It started to go down. And they were like, you know, Will Robinson, you know, danger, danger. Things are coming at them really fast. So let's see what Bill McBride said, who's founder of a Calculated Risk. Yeah, as inventory picked up sharply in 2022, I adjusted my outlook in October of 2022 and wrote, house prices, seven years in purgatory. I noted that 10% decline in nominal prices now seemed likely. However, the inventory surge in 2022 was somewhat a he- of a head fake. Some potential sellers quickly listed their homes, probably remembering what happened with the housing prices from 2006 to 2011 period. But that surge ended really quickly, Mary. Yeah, it really did. Yeah. As a matter of fact, that what they came out with is if you look at new listings, we're expect to skyrocket and look at what's happening. That's what they thought. And now that's in 2022. And look at what they did. Absolutely. And I think that's an indication of a lot of things. I mean, we have people that are sitting on 3% interest rates that don't have to sell. Right. And they're sitting there thinking to themselves, maybe now's not the time for me. Exactly. But the person that does have to sell. That low inventory, huge, huge market event benefit. Yeah. Way big benefit for them. And if they have to buy something else, you've got some really cool products for that, which we'll talk about. Recession and end of moratorium, tsunami of foreclosures. That's what they were all freaking out about as well. But look at what's happening. Randy, is anyone talking about foreclosures? I haven't heard anybody talk about foreclosures in over five years. Yeah. To be honest with you. It's if you've been in this business long enough, we've gone through those periods. Yeah. It's not, it's a non-factor. And if you look at this, this was, um, you know, 2023 to date, we might end up, end up to where, you know, we were in 18 or 19, but look at the height in 10, 1.7 million foreclosures. And let me tell you, if you're in a foreclosure, you know, we do not want to take it lightly. That is not the place, you know, we can help you get out of it because stuff in life happens, but we can help you get through that process. But for, if you're looking to invest and you're worried about foreclosures, we just don't see it. So serious delinquencies on a decline. Here's what Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are showing us. That I mean, percent of mortgage. You're in the business. Are you? You're just not seeing it. Mary, I think we all could not escape the news a year ago. Re- recession is coming. Recession is coming. Right. And then all of a sudden, you know, interest rates are rising. And the, and to the person that's not in this business, they think six and seven percent interest rates are somehow bad. And they're yeah. just not. They're normal. So as consumer confidence is getting a little bit better. You know, I think the market is just, it's just finding its new normal. I agree. You know, it has nothing to do with housing, but I have to have a little fun tidbit. I was watching a financial analyst presentation over the weekend, and he said that back in Reagan days, at anything above 200,000 in income was taxed at 95%. Mm -hmm. Randy, I can't believe it. And then in the Clinton era, I think it was somewhere around 45 or 50%. You know, we are not taxed that high. 
And these interest rates are not crazy. Like back in those days, they were 18%. It was incredible. Mary, the first house you bought, do you remember the interest rate? I do. What was it? 14%. My parents was like 17.875. Yeah, I know I'm not your parents' age. <laughs> he you laughs. Are not, he not, laughs. You are not. But I'm not your parents' age. No. But you're right. I mean, and then my yeah. next one was 10%. I was like, woo, we got 4% less, you know? Yeah, what people don't understand is those low interest rates, we've never in the history of our country seen those things. And there's a lot of, I want to say, we're going to have to dig ourselves out of that for a little while. Yeah. Right now, like I said, a new normal of the market has been found. I do believe the interest rates have gone up a little too high. Yeah. We do look for a little bit of a pullback in an election year next year, but we're finding that new normal right now and the market is healthy and we all love that. Yeah. We'll talk about that in a minute, but let's go back to delinquencies. Sure. Uh, read what M Molly has to say. Yeah. May's overall mortgage delinquency rate matched the all time low and, and serious delinquencies followed suit. Furthermore, the rate of mortgages that were six months or more past due, a measure that ballooned in 2021 has receded to the level last observed like in March of 2020. That's COVID years. Yeah. And you, by the way, you couldn't even kick somebody out, right. even with huge delinquencies in COVID, right. you know, um, which not a bad thing, but, you know, really a problem for some things. Bill McBride, our friend from Calculated Risk, what's he saying now in November of 2008? Foreclosure activity is already at record levels yet. As prices fall, foreclosure activity will probably continue to increase. The activity will literally be off the chart. He nailed it. Right. He got huge accolades for nailing it in 2008. Right. July 2023, there will not be a foreclosure crisis at this time. Totally agree. Yeah. So if Bill McBride is saying it and he nailed it when there was, and he's saying no problem, we shouldn't fear. So if we look at home prices um, and look at appreciation in the last three years, I do like this slide. There's a whole bunch of other slides that we're not going to bore you with details with, but I like this snack bit of sampling of cities across the U.S., and what they've seen in appreciation. One of the lowest ones was San Francisco at, you know, 27.6. Darn, 27% increase? Yeah. Well, I think most people, what they do is they obviously look at their own home and they use right. the public sites to see the valuation of it. Yeah. But it has done, done nothing but gone up and up and up and up. Right. Or the house that they were going to buy a year ago, but they were waiting. What is that worth today? Yeah. I've seen a lot of that. Um, nationally, 41.8%. Can you even believe it? So- Give me what Andy Walden is saying. There is no doubt that the housing market has reignited from a home price perspective. Firming prices have now fully erased the pullback we tracked through the last half of 2022 mm -hmm. and lifted the seasonally adjusted Black Knight HPI to a new record high in May. Which it does seasonally adjust. I mean, when you start to think about that, that is really a true deal. And in up north, it seasonally adjusts high in the spring and the summer. And here we are in the winter in the last of the winter and, well, I guess all of the winter, January through Easter. But if we look at what the original forecasts were back in 12 of 22 for this year, five of these were negative and AEI was super negative. CoreLogic was at 3%, so they were saying there's going to be an increase. Look at the rest of them. Now the current forecast, they're all lowest one is zero and they go all the way up to 6.8. Yeah, again, I think those low interest rates have prevented people from maybe listing their house, as long as we have low inventory and as long as we have a large buyer demand, these prices are going to continue to go up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. For sure. This is a 48 year average monthly price improvement. And you can see it, Randy, for the, that case Schiller puts it out mm -hmm. um, from 73 to 21. They've analyzed this. This is the movement that I was talking about. When you look at seasonally, nationally, what happens? Prices improve in the North through March and August. And then in the off months, we're looking at the reverse of that. Yeah. I mean, this is this is every year, you know, kids are getting out of schools or getting into new school systems. Yeah. It's the summer months, months. We all know that that's the prime buying season for a big portion of the country. Right. You know, and then obviously as you go into the holiday season, it tails off everywhere but here. Yeah. And, and I'm going to show you how listings come up in a minute. But declaration or deceleration of appreciation is not the same thing as home prices are depreciating. That's such an important point. Mm-hmm. And it really is because you'll see, and even in slides that I've done, Randy, and you and I've presented in the past that showed really in July of last year where they kind of started the first time we started to see it based on median price go below zero. But honestly, that's a deceleration of appreciation and not depreciating. Still an appreciating asset. Yeah, still is. So if we look at the inventory is still histor historically low, week over week of July 28th which was what this data was from. It's up a little bit, 
almost 2%. But if we look at 22 and we look at 2019, we are still down in inventory. Why do you think that is? Does anybody want to get rid of their 3% mortgage? If they don't have to sell? No, but if I'm somebody who actually does have to sell, yeah. do I want less competition? Oh, he's got a good point. That's a mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Yeah. So Lawrence Yan, the chief economist of NAR, what's he saying? There are simply not enough homes for sale. This is so true. The market can easily absorb a doubling of the inventory right now, Mary. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it sure can. And one more, the mortgage reports. In a seller's market, sellers often think that they don't need an agent because anyone can sell a house during a favorable period. However, it is important to remember that agents don't sell houses. Rather, they facilitate, consult, and protect their clients throughout the process. I love that. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, our marketing brings eyeballs, but I can't force a house to sell. 100%. You know, and we help a lot of families facilitate. So near and dear to your heart, mortgage rates. So they're saying they're going pretty much maybe up-ish and then down-ish. Uh, you know, they've, they've steadily risen um, over the last two years as they keep raising the Fed rate to battle the inflation. But inflation is at an all-time low right now, has it been for the last two years. Mm -hmm. um, they're, d they're just trying to find that sweet spot. It's yeah. not hurting the economy. It's not hurting the housing market. No. So as long as that is happening, they consider that a healthy market. Yeah. yeah. I do. I, I honestly do believe, and I think most people believe, that they will peel back in an election year next year. Yeah. They'll find that sweet spot, and they'll always make that adjustment to keep the market healthy. You know, it's interesting um, on this particular slide, if they get with a five in the first digit, I think we're going to start to see crazy sales. That seller's market could take off again. And a lot of refis. Like, I mean, let's be honest. I'm, we're writing a ton of business right now. Yeah. And we tell every single person that's writing right now, we're going to give you a 30-year mortgage if that's what you choose. Yeah. It's not a 30-year plan. Right. Which is which is so true. Okay. So you tuned in to hear us talk about Southwest Florida. And what we're going to talk about is not prices. Um, because, you know, median values can be off, et cetera. We've seen some seasonality with it. But what I am going to talk about is by county, the number of new listings. So you can see this really dark black line is what's happened up through July, which is what we have. And we are still bringing on less listings than 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22 in Collier County, which is crazy. If you look at Lee County, it's kind of in the middle of all of that. Um, and, you know, we did have a storm. People are still fixing things, et cetera. But at the end of the day, we didn't see a lot of distressed properties go up on the market. We saw some, but not everybody put their property up on the market that had water damage. I think it's important to point out that less listings doesn't necess necessarily mean less, less buyers. That's right. It doesn't. It just means if I have to sell my property, yeah. now is the time because I want the least amount of competition possible. I want the most amount of competing buyers for my unit. Absolutely. I'm going to show you one more slide, Randy, and that's just because, you know, we started here in Marco Island, and so I want to make sure that we show those Marco Island statistics and look how low our listings are in Marco Island. We're at a time where we always say, is it time to move? And I think you nailed it a couple of times in here when, when you said, if you need to sell, this is a great time. If I want to sell my property, I want the least amount of competition as possible. Yeah. I, I'm, you know, if there's... Like I said, we're there is an upside if I'm a seller yeah. to the low interest rates and people maybe wanting to hang on the hang on to those for a little bit. But mm -hmm. at some point, if I'm trying to maximize the profit of the sale of my house. Absolutely. If you're interested in a comparable market analysis, we're going to ask you to give us a call, text us, whatever. Um, if you're interested in getting a mortgage on a property or you're moving to, we'd love you to call Randy. You know, now is the time to move and there's not a ton of com competition. So until next time, I'm Mary Bartis with the Bartos Group of Premier Plus. Randy Williams with TBF Mortgage. Ciao.